aid can be made to work. It often does work, but too often it doesn't work, especially where it's needed most. And that the aid system sometimes is cutting off its own nose to spite its face. The aid system, private and public, is part of the problem. The fundamental problem in many low-income countries, because they're highly dependent on, as much as 50% of their spending comes from outside, they're highly dependent on aid, is that their tax system, as part of their social contract, is not yet activated. It's not yet working. The problem is always there when the money is coming from outside. This is the fundamental problem of incentives and accountability that we're trying to address with this particular modality we've defined of cash on delivery aid. Let me just say a few quick words about the fundamental features of cash on delivery aid, and then my colleagues will follow up. There are five. First, well, let me say, think of it as a business-like contract, that's what we're proposing, between one or more funders and one or more recipient governments. Think of it as a five-year contract. We also propose that to address one of the sins that I outlined in that earlier paper, the impatience of the donors. They want results now. A business-like contract um, could be with private or public money that has these five features. First, outcomes not inputs. The outcomes would measure incremental progress on some fundamental goal that is a goal both of the funder and the recipient. Second, hands off on the part of the funder. It's not the funder that would design the inputs. The funder has agreed on the outcomes. It's the government that worries about what economists call the production function the inputs, and has five years in principle to try different interventions, learn from them, and possibly adjust. Third, independent verification, so that the funder can be comfortable that the money being transferred is covering the actual outcomes or is associated with outcomes and is not being lost, say, to waste, corruption, and so on. Uh, that was third. Fourth, transparency uh, to the citizens so that it, you, there's a partial substitute for the absence of the tax system in full regalia that creates accountability. There's accountability to citizens. Uh, this is a way through transparency to make sure, you'll hear more about it, I shouldn't say too much more. Um, that's fourth. And fifth, complementary to other aid to the upfront input type aid that is traditional. Uh, complementary in the sense that it might, by bringing incentives and greater accountability, actually increase the efficiency with which all the other aid is used. Um, I would say in response to, par partially in response to the comment that you made, um, that one of the reasons that, that COD we think could have an impact is that it could help align incentives. So it's not necessarily that the Minister of Education doesn't care about students completing school. It might be that the constraint is outside of the Ministry of Education, and there might be a constraint because of the lack of roads, or back to the example that we were giving earlier. And so cash on delivery aid could be a way, because the funding is provided to the central government, to the Ministry of Finance, to create an incentive for the Ministry of Finance or you know, other entities in the government to say, OK, how can we all work together to ensure that we are making progress towards more children completing primary school, which might be, which might require action outside of the Ministry of Education. On the, the issue about technical assistance, I do think that this um, addresses the issue because the money is no longer linked to you're getting a grant from us or a loan from us, therefore you have to use the consultants that we approve. So the government really, as in these cases that were mentioned here, like in Botswana and Rwanda and stuff, have much more uh, autonomy to decide who they're going to hire and if they're going to hire and under what terms. So that's, a, I think, a very clear, easy answer. It seems to me that there are possibilities in a place like Liberia to do exactly this kind of approach, which might actually be easier for donors to do 
than input-based aid where they have to monitor for fear of waste, for fear of corruption, all the disbursements and all of, all of the arrangements.